In this video, we are going to learn a cool trick to allow our SP.NET Core applications to be more efficient, and that is that we can include cancellation token in our endpoints. The idea of cancellation token is that it will allow us to cancel a task. In that way, if the user leaves our page or just cancel an operation, we can cancel a long-running task so that we don't waste resources. Let's see that. I am here in a web API application and I choose a web API application because it is easy for me to make this example, but the code that I will show you will work in a Blazor application, MVC application, and so on. So I'm here in the Weather Forecast Controller, which is a controller that gets created in a new web API application. And in here, down below, we have this typical get method that returns an enumerable of weather forecast. Now, just for a moment, let's pretend that I have here a long running task. I have here this async keyword, which means that I can use a wait here. So task delay, let's say three seconds, but I want to be able to cancel this code that I have here. Let me put here logger, log error, executing long running code. So if I press Ctrl F5 to run my application, we can go to Postman. We're going to see that we have here Swagger, but in order to make this test, we have to use Postman because Postman allows me to cancel the HTTP request. So let me go to Postman. I have here the URL. If I click on send and I cancel, we're going to see that even though I canceled, I still run this code that says executing long running code. So the cancel didn't work. Yes, from here, it seems like I canceled the task, but on the server, this code still got executed, which is not cool because then we're wasting resources because if the user canceled the task, then we shouldn't continue running this endpoint. So what we can do is that we can use a cancellation token. So I can come here and say cancellation token, cancellation token, and in the case of task delay, we can just pass cancellation token. And don't worry, we're going to see a more realistic example in just a minute. Now, if you have used cancellation token in the past, you know that by canceling a task, we get an exception and therefore we should do a try catch. So let me put this in a try block, then catch here, exception. And in here I can put a log error like cancel task. And here I can return bad request, for example. Now I'm returning bad request, but the client of the application is never going to see the 400 bar request because they canceled that request. So they're not going to see anything, but I do this just to keep the c -sharp compiler happy. All right, so let's press Control F5 to run our application one more time. And let's come back here and let's see that. Let me go to the console first. Let's see that it is clean. So send, cancel, and then here we have cancel task. And as you can see, even though three seconds have passed, we don't have this line of code here in the console. And of course, if I come back here and I click on send and I don't click on cancel, then we're going to see that indeed now we have executing long running code, of course, because we didn't cancel the task. Now let's see a more realistic example that I was mentioning, and that is that in this post method that I created, we are communicating with the database. I'm instantiating here a connection and using command definition and passing the query. As you can see here, I'm using a wait for delay just so we can wait for five seconds to simulate a long running query. This is our query. We're going to insert a record in the people table and then we're going to select a scope identity. And we're going to pass as a parameter the name of the person. And then we have await connection query single async. And we pass the command definition. We are using Dapper, by the way. But this would work with, for example, Entity Framework or error.net if you prefer. So again, if I come here and I go to post, here I have this already. By the way, let me show you that here we have the people table and it is empty, as you can see. So I have Felipe here, sent cancel, but after a few seconds, we're going to get Felipe here. Let me refresh a few times. And here it is, we have Felipe. Because since I don't have a cancellation token here, then even though I cancel the task, 
this query is still executed, but I don't want that. I want to cancel the query. So let me say here, cancellation token, cancellation token, and then in here, after parameters, I can say cancellation token, colon, cancellation token. And that's it. With this, we're good to go. Control F5 to run our application. Let's come back here. We know that we have Felipe, right? All right, so let's come back here. I will put Felipe2, send, cancel. And if we come back here, we're going to see that it doesn't matter how many times I do this. It doesn't matter how much time it passes. We never get Felipe2 here. And we never get Felipe2 here because as we can see in the console, we got an exception that says, a task was canceled, of course, because we canceled the task. So as you can see here, we don't have anything else. Now again, we can use a try catch to handle the exception as we just learned how to do. And of course, if I come back here, I wanted to come back to Postman and I press send and I don't click on cancel, we're going to see that after a few seconds, that task is going to finish and then we can come back here and see that we have Felipe2 here. So as you can see, we can use cancellation token in order to be more efficient with our SP.NET Core applications so that when the user leaves the page or cancel a task, we can cancel the query or cancel the HTTP request and save resources. If you want to learn more about SP.NET Core, buy my Udemy course today. I have courses on SP.NET Core with React, SP.NET Core with Angular, learning C-sharp and more. Link with a discount to all of my courses in the description of this video. Thank you.